Hey guys, so Cal Val here. You are listening to the Hitting the Turnbuckle podcast. Hello and welcome once again to another Hitting the Turnbuckle podcast. I am your host, Adam Cousins. As you can see behind me, this is the Monday Night Raw review for the Raw that aired on, on Monday night or Tuesday morning over here in the United Kingdom. Uh, Raw opened up, uh, Seth freaking Rollins come out. Everybody was singing his song like he normally does. He does his usual chuckle like he normally does and basically said it was time uh, that the Raw World Heavyweight Championship was defended on Monday Night Raw. Hadn't been for two years. Uh, Big E was the last one. Seth Rollins being the workhorse wanted to defend that title on a weekly basis. That challenge was accepted by Damian Priest, who come out alongside Finn Balor. Uh, they had a bit of a to-do in the ring. Seth basically said that, you know, you can't beat me uh, without your pals at ringside, being Finn, Dominic and Rhea. Finn goes to offer a triad on Seth and Damian Priest interrupts him and says, hey, I'll do it. I'll accept your challenge for tonight without any judgment day at ringside uh looks as if finn didn't quite like that and then seth made a little joke at the end basically saying that his title reign was already longer than finn's uh, as he chuckled and, and left uh, the arena so that match was the main event on monday night raw this week the first match on the card was a women's money in the bank qualifying match between sonia deville uh, and becky lynch um pretty much standard generic Becky Lynch match to be honest um during that match uh Trish Stratus and uh Zoe Stark come to the stage to try and put Becky Lynch off uh they had again the match was okay it was a competitive ish match um could have been a bit more competitive Sonya Deville is actually quite a good worker so could have gone a bit better but Becky hits the manhandle slam and wins and goes on uh, to Money in the Bank over here in the UK at the end of June, uh, which we're very much looking forward to. There was another backstage segment uh, with Kev uh, Kevin and Sammy. Uh, and that was interrupted by, of course, uh, Ludwig Kaiser and Giovanni Vinci. And uh, basically, for as long as they hold the titles, Imperium are going to be targeting them. And um, basically, this sets up the match between Gunter and Kevin Owens. And my god what a match this was now if we can start seeing this on raw on a more regular basis long competitive matches with two great wrestlers who can just go i think raw would be a much better place uh, than what it has been over the last few years uh, where we've had a few little you know bits and pieces going on but nothing major um so this match for me was fantastic i loved every single minute of it near falls near falls um unfortunately for me it got ruined near the end because of interference with by ludwig uh vinci and sammy uh, and it allowed gunter to take advantage and roll owens up for the win real shame uh, that the match ended how it did i would have preferred it if uh, the match had continued. Maybe if they'd barred them from ringside and had a one-on-one -on -one match, uh, Gunter and, and Kevin Owens, because it was an outstanding match. I just don't like the fact that they had to use uh, the, the interference to get the win, to be quite honest with you. Um, at the back again, they interview Riddle. He doesn't like the fact that Gunter cheats every week. Uh, but funnily enough, he does attack Kaiser and Vinci, puts Vinci in an ankle lock and security separates him. Again, we're looking here at the new Matt Riddle, a uh, more serious Matt Riddle to the one that we've been seeing recently. Um, so Mo more sort of, there's not much more comedy, but a lot more Riddle focusing on what Riddle does best, uh, which is fight. Uh, and we'll see. Although Andy, uh, our host, may not uh, may not like that one bit, but 
Matt Riddle is a good worker, in my opinion. I know Andy doesn't like him, but I think he's good. Um, they had another interview at this point. This was Ronda Rousey, Shayna Baszler. Uh, they issued a challenge to any team. That was accepted by Caden Carter and Kat Katrina Chance, or Katana Chance, sorry. Uh, debut on Raw from, from NXT. Uh, one of the surprising picks, in my opinion, uh, for the draft. They come out. And again... This actually was a better match than expected. Ronda and Shayna, I'm not a fan of these, these ones being tag champions. There's rumours going round, and this is recorded on a Friday, so apologies for the, the late recording of this. Normally we do it on Tuesday, but it, it's Friday today. Uh, there is rumours going round now that the Women's World Championships and the NXT World Champions World Tag Team Championships held by Isla, Isla Dawn and Alba Fryer will be put together as one. Um, so I'm going to see uh, if that's going to be happening. It may happen as early as SmackDown uh, tonight. Uh, so it'd be interesting with that, how that goes forward, what their plans are. So this match was actually good. Uh, uh, Chance and <clears throat> and so done really well. I thought they'd done a lot better than, you know, what I was expecting to do. The match was better than I expected. Uh, I'm still not convinced with Ronda Rousey yet. She started good, but I think, again, it's just got so bland and simple with her that I'd like to see more. I thought she had more in a locker when she came in. So I would like to see more from Ronda Rousey going forward. If they put these titles together, what happens to the NXT Women's Champions? And if that gets amalgamated with the Raw Women's titles, uh, uh, the Raw, sorry, the tag team titles, because they're both on both shows, what actually happens to that? I don't know. Um, but it'll be an interesting few weeks because apparently there's going to be a lot more new titles being made. Not quite sure I need to keep making titles, but hey, hope it is what it is. Um, Ricochet was backstage. Uh, he was interrupted by Bronson Reed, basically called him lucky for qualifying for money in the bank. Uh, well, Nakamura basically uh, come in and sort of said he beat Bronson Reed. That led to the next match between Shinsuke Nakamura and Ricochet generally that is a take my money match. I say that quite often on this podcast. Ricochet Nakamura is a fantastic match. The only problem is it didn't last long. And it didn't last long because Bronson Reed comes out and clears house. He hits a tsunami on Ricochet. He beats up Nakamura. I am waiting to see if somehow Bronson Reed inserts himself into money in the bank uh, in a couple of weeks' time over here in the UK. It will be certainly an interesting couple of weeks on Raw to see if he manages to get in. Will they do a last chance battle royal? Sometimes they do that. No idea. I did hear a whisper that Riddle would be in the last match on Raw. Maybe Bronson will take that last spot, have a match with Riddle, and maybe Gunter interferes, costing Riddle the match and puts Bronson in. Who knows? We'll have to wait and see to Monday. Uh, Alpha Academy were backstage with Maxine Dupree. Um, basically, Chad Gable is going to train Maxine to face Valhalla of the uh, Viking Raiders. Um, I love these. I love, I, they're a comedy team, but they're both so good singly. And together, really, just didn't, they don't have to be uh, in a comedic team, in my opinion. That's just how they're presented uh, with the shoes uh, and, and whatever else. Uh, it's, it's massively over with the crowd. There's no doubt about that. Um, yeah, I'm, I just wish we would see that. We say this so many times on this podcast. Chad Gable is Kurt Angle 2023. Give him that. Uh, you know, bring Kurt in as his manager. I, I don't care. That guy is a world champion. I don't care about his height. I don't care about his size. He is a world champion. Strap a rocket to that guy and let Chad Gable fly because he is absolutely fantastic. From a wrestler's perspective, he has everything. He's got speed. He's got agility. He can high fly. He's powerful still. He can still do German suplexes to nearly everybody. Give him a rocket. Give him an Intercontinental title or US title, whatever's on Raw now, the, the, the IC titles on Raw. Give him the Intercontinental Championship. Let him go with it. Um, he is that good. And it's so frustrating because you see that. And WWE are really bad for this. 
they will take two workers like Otis and, and Chad. And, and look, it's working that they're over. But you know how good Chad Gable is. Just give him an opportunity. Otis is also really good, but there is a comedic value I can understand. But Chad Gable just reminds me of Kurt Angle when he came into the WWE. Just give him a chance, for God's sake, and give him a title. Uh, anyway, rant over, uh, I promise you. Um, Miz TV was next with uh, Cody Rhodes. Uh, he asked if challenging Brock was stupid, and Cody said no one is stupid until now. Long story short, this brought out Dominic uh, to the hit to Monday Night Raw, along with Mammy, um, Rhea Ripley. Dominic basically called Cody a deadbeat dad like his father. Uh, Cody did say that he had a worse prison uh, that Dominic had a worse prison tattoo than what Cody did. Uh, hopefully that wasn't an AEW reference in there, but maybe it was. Um, anyway, oh, and he did say that Ray Mysterio did make one mistake. Him and his wife gave birth to Dominic. And just as they were about to leave, Dominic turns around and slaps Cody and then they leg it out the ring. Uh, backstage, you see Damian Priest warming up to uh, for his main event match against Seth Rollins for the title. The next match was the second Women's Money in the Bank qualifier matches on the show. This featured Natalia and Zoe Stark. Before this even gets underway, this match, you know who's winning this. It's absolutely set in stone, no matter what. There was no chance of Natty winning this. And this isn't a disrespect to Natty at all. Um, in, you can just tell where they were going with this. Zoe Stark hits the Z360 for the win. It was a nothing match. What annoys me with WWE, and, and Andy does a great point about Natalia, it feels like she's done nothing in this WWE because she's never had... She's never had really what she deserves, which is a lengthy run with the championship. She is the, the measuring stick of the women's division has always been Natalia. And they've never, ever let her showcase that. Probably rant number two here when I say this, but she is still probably better than most of that roster. But she never gets the opportunity that she deserves. Maybe she's happy with that. Maybe she is. I don't know. But for me, Natalia should be ranked so much higher. I've got no problem, by the way, with Zoe Stark. I think Zoe Stark giving her the rub with Trish Stratus is a big way of introducing her to Monday Night Raw, introducing her to the WWE fans who maybe don't watch NXT. She has been a really, she's very improved. And it also does prove a good point with Triple H running creative to a certain extent the NXT guys are now getting shown in the right way and not coming on as milk moon or as gimps or clowns or gimps seems to be the favorite word. Uh, there's a week. Um, Triple H doing creative to a degree is at least giving that platform for the NXT guys. And at least now when they get called up, they're going to be taken seriously instead of being left in the lurch for so long or not used. So Zoe Stark wins. I'm just think Natalia should be showcased far better than what she is in my opinion. Now, the next bit really gets on towards tonight's SmackDown episode. Paul Heyman. Uh, now, hmm, rant free. I'm sorry. This is rant free. Um, I have, look, they've done the draft, okay? And the draft basically was that Roman Reigns, Solo Sokoa, and Paul Heyman were exclusive to SmackDown as part, because Roman Reigns is the champion. He was exclusive, and whoever he brought with him was exclusive. The next bit, Roman, Paul Heyman's at Raw. Now, what was the point in doing this poxy draft in the first place if every week we're going to see someone from another show come on? The free agent part is stupid, but I don't mind it. The free agent part's cool, okay? You can get a few talents. It gives them ring time. It gives them a chance to go into and get some uh, matches under their belt. And it gives a bit of star power to maybe NXT, like Ali and, and Corbin were on there. So it gives a bit of, you know, star power to NXT for a bit. No problem. No problem that Corbin's on SmackDown this week. No problem that Ali's on SmackDown this week. They're not, they're free agents. They can go wherever they go. Paul Heyman was exclusive to SmackDown, should be nowhere near Raw. He does cut a promo. 
And he basically said this week on SmackDown, Jay Uso is going to make his choice between his brother and his twin. And he did make the point that basically he's going to stand by his brother, Solo Sokoa. I have a feeling that may not be correct, um, but nevertheless, it will always get viewers onto SmackDown. SmackDown has been by far the best show uh, in a long time. Uh, the next match, uh, Sean Benjamin, Cedric Alexandra versus Inda Shah. Rant number four. <laughs> um, look, we know why, it, well, according to reports, WWE are promoting Inda Share because they're going to do a show in India and they want them to be strong. No problem. Absolutely no problem with that. That's fine. Why are you putting them against Shelton Benjamin and Cedric Alexandra when those two are fantastic? Again, brilliant wrestlers. And they give you a nothing match like that. It just annoys me because, again, we, we talked about Natty. We've talked about others, Chad Gable. I haven't seen Shelton or Cedric in ages. Maybe they've been on main event or, or what have you. But you bring them to Raw for a two-minute demolishing by Indershare. Like I said, they've got to get over. They've got to book strong. They're going to India. Just base, just put them against a load of shit like they did last week. Why have you got to bring established people down because you want to get these guys over? If it was a more competitive match, and I, and I, I kind of get it, these two these two guys are meant to be kind of monsters. They're meant to be wrecking machines. Okay, don't put them in the ring against them guys, for God's sake. Uh, rant for. Uh, I promise you, there is no more rants uh, because the next match is the World Heavyweight Championship and was the main event of Raw. Finally, Raw gets a World Heavyweight Championship match for two years. We're going to be finally seeing the World Heavyweight Champion opening and closing shows like I like like I like it. I, you, you need a world champion on both shows. SmackDown is a bit difficult because Roman's only got a part-time, although he's working much more now over as we lead up to SummerSlam I think he's not in every other week so good for SmackDown great for Raw to have a, a champion on their full time uh, and especially great that it's Seth Rollins who's a great worker this match again pay-per-view quality match between Priest and Seth Rollins again it had a lot you didn't expect Seth to lose this match I, I, don't, I don't even think during that match there may have been one bit, I think Priest hit south of heaven, and I thought, oh, could this be it? Um, but it wasn't. Uh, of, of course, uh, they kicked out of the south heaven. Um, Finn Balor come out again, and, there, and then there was this dissension that started between him and Priest. Priest was like, what are you doing here? This is my this is my time. I want it. Um so a bit of dissension there as Damien Priest uh, goes to put Seth Rollins in a razor's edge. Uh, he falls through, elbows him, uh, hits him with the stomp and wins. Now, we know that Jordan McDonough or JD McDonough is meant to be in the judgment day. I initially thought he'll be coming in alongside everybody else. This thing they're teasing with Priest uh, uh, and Balor makes me think they kick out Priest and bring in McDonough. Don't know. Could just be, you know, nothing. They may bring in McDonough as well to go alongside him. But the fact that they're teasing this a bit of dissension between Priest and Bala uh, makes it a very, very interesting week or so coming up on Raw as we lead up uh, to Money in the Bank, which is in two, two weeks' time. Yeah, two weeks. Three weeks' time. Sorry, three weeks' time. Before the team buckle, attend Money in the Bank and SmackDown. We're very much looking forward to it. Uh, that was Monday Night Raw. Now, I did rant four times during this uh, uh, review of Monday Night Raw. Or overall, I really enjoyed those two great matches between Gunter and Owens and Seth and Priest. 
we need to see more of that going forward i think that would be really really good if we had these long competitive matches if you're going to get in the sheer out for a job match put them against two local talents i've been doing that for three months no one's gonna look no one cares anyway so it's not like it's going to be important uh, you get them over strong that's all good and then get them to india where they can be strong but overall a really good, solid Monday Night Raw. A few little bits and pieces I didn't like, but it, it's still a good show, nevertheless. Guys, thank you so much for uh, listening to this again today. We will be back at some point this weekend with the SmackDown review. We've got Raw reviews, uh, AEW reviews coming up. We've put a poll out on Twitter. Which promotion do you want us to cover next? MLW or Impact Wrestling? That is there until tomorrow. We want to see some of your feedback. It's very interesting what we've had so far. People have said, do one, do the other, do both. Um, we're keen to find out. We've got another top 10 going next week. We're looking forward to that. That is top 10 entrance music. That's going to be a very interesting debate next Friday with myself, uh, Andy, and Dynamite Dave, DMD. Uh, so we're really looking forward to that. We've got some guest interviews coming up as well. We'll announce them once they are done. But guys, this has been the Hitting the Turnbuckle podcast. Hang on a minute. I've got my gimmick now. With me, Adam C, baby. Boom. Buckle down and stay safe.